Joining us now, Jeff Casello. He is Professor of Transportation at the University of Waterloo, and we're happy to have you back in our studio. Thanks, Steve. We spend a lot of time, I guess, on this program, particularly because of the hot mares race, talking about uh, public transit options mm -hmm. here in Toronto. But um, we shouldn't let that discussion obscure the fact that there are lots of conversations happening elsewhere in the province, and that's why we've got you in, because that's your, that's your focus. Big focus these days on light rail across the province. Why light rail? Well, I think that we're realizing now that we need to do something different with our transit. We've been working on bus systems for the last, really, five decades with, I will say honestly, marginal, marginal success. And the reason is that buses have, I think, in the post-war era, a stigma associated with it, and the quality of service really doesn't compete when you have buses in a mixed traffic situation. So the idea behind light rail is to upgrade the quality of our system, give it a new image, bring in a new set of riders and really for once compete in public transit in mid-sized cities throughout the throughout the, uh, the country. Now for those who don't know, light rail, is that different from just the average streetcar that yeah, runs on? Yeah, thanks for it asking. Is. That's an important question okay. because the difference between light rail and streetcars are predominantly on the right of way it operates. So if you compare the streetcars on King Street to the King, to the streetcars on St. Clair. It's in Toronto. Yes, in Toronto, using that example. But if you take the streetcar, you take the light rail system so that there aren't cars in front of it and behind it. It has its own lane and it performs much better than the traditional streetcar. We're Plus seeing some uh, pictures from Portland right now. This is the light rail, got its own right, right away and all that. This it's, is what you're talking about. That's right. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is the vehicle is different. We're talking about longer, more comfortable vehicles. They are low floor easier on and off. They are better energy performance than, than the old streetcar system. So the concept that we're returning to an old technology is, is just flat out wrong. Hmm. Um, buses. Let me come back to buses mm -hmm. for a second. York Region, just north of here. Yep. They've got the Viva bus system, which seems right. to get a lot of positive notices. It does. Mississauga's in the, in the process of, uh, yep. I think, upping their, their uh, bus rap rapid transit system. Light rail is way more expensive than buses. It so is. is it worth the extra money? It depends on the situation. Um, the areas in which buses compete better than, well, first of all, if we're, we're talking about bus and light rail, we have to make sure we're talking about the same operating procedures, right? So a bus is operating in its own lane, like Viva does for part of its alignment, then it can compete with light rail. But for what's, what kind of service should it provide? Well, if you have a very long alignment, right, that would cost a lot of money in infrastructure to build a rail system, then a bus is a cheaper alternative, provided that you're not trying to influence the land uses along the way. So if you have a bus that stops every 500 meters or every kilometer, then it's not express anymore. If you have a rail system that stops every kilometer, then you have an opportunity to generate lots of land use activity around those stops. And in many ways, what's happening in the province is land use is thought of as a, uh, sorry, uh, LRT is thought of as not only a transportation alternative, but something to influence the way our cities are actually formed. You know exactly where I'm going next, because <laughs> this is, this. Is, let's bring up this graphic, Michael, if we can, because we did have the mayor of Portland in here recently, right. and these were the numbers he gave us about what Portland's LRT has done to that city. Mm -hmm. You see it here. $3.5 billion has been invested within two blocks of streetcar alignment, LRT alignment, mm -hmm. 10,000 plus new housing units, 5.4 million square feet of office, institutional, retail, and hotel construction have been constructed within two blocks of the alignment. 55% of all central business district development since 1997 has occurred within one block of, I guess they call it the streetcars, but it's LRT. Yeah. It's what you're talking mm -hmm. about here. So, you build it and they will come, I guess is the message here. Let's talk about Waterloo, because right. this is a big deal. It's a mid-range city, kind of yep. like Portland, Oregon. What would it take for Waterloo to get a Portland-like results from the proposed LRT that you've got going there? It's a great question. And what it takes is a combination of transportation and land use policy. So Waterloo right now is a region of 500,000 people. In 20 years, we're going to 750,000 people, and we're going to also double our jobs in that time period. The question is, for Waterloo, do you want those jobs and those people to be at the edge of town where car is the only option for them? Do we want to consume farmland? Do we want to have to extend our infrastructure all the way out there? Or do we want them to be in, in our already, de already developed area? And the way you bring them into the already developed area is you give them transportation alternatives like light rail. So you build a station, you put in infrastructure, you provide amenities, you give economic incentives to the development community, and you say, this is where we want you to build and this is where we're going to support building and if you bring 50 percent of the new development so 125,000 new residents into the central transit quarter you're going to generate the ridership well, and you're going to generate the economic activity that is the experience of portland where they did a mix of streetcar yes. and lrt however mm -hmm. not everybody agrees with you i'm I going to read you a quote from this is from peter sean taylor in the national post uh, earlier this year like many smaller urban centers that dream big Waterloo Region has a population, as you just told us, of 500,000. Local councillors figure the quickest way to grandeur is to build themselves a light rail transit system. Mm -hmm. LRTs are meant to serve large metropolitan cities with high volume commuter traffic heading to downtown employment cores. 
Waterloo Region lacks it all. Population, commuters, and a downtown. Does this give you pause? No, and I'll tell you Those why. aren't legitimate criticisms? Uh, they are not legitimate criticisms in 2010. If you look at the way cities evolved in the post-war period, there was a downtown and everybody would come into work, they would work in the downtown, they would get in their cars and they would drive back out to their suburban developments and live comfortably in the three bedroom, quarter acre lot with the one and a half children and one and a half dogs in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't do that anymore. Now we want to live and work. This idea of having a single downtown core is not the way our cities are shaped anymore. We have what we call polycentric cities. So there are activity centers, there are concentrations of activity, but there are many of them. And mm -hmm. in Waterloo, we're very fortunate because they're all along one corridor. So we have downtown Kitchener, we have uptown Waterloo, we have our two universities, we have another mall at the northernmost section. And all of these are land use, land uses that generate lots of trips. And by being able to connect them in one corridor with a light rail transit system, it is a more efficient transportation system than trying to do it with buses. And certainly it's a more efficient transportation system than allowing development like this to happen at the edge of town, again, consuming farmland. Okay, well, having said that, let me raise a teeny little issue called Please. money. Yes. Price tag, $800 million. The federal government's up for $265 million. The province is up for right. $300 million. Where's the remaining $200 million going to come from to build this dream? Okay, so the question is, why are we staying at $800 million? There is some value engineering going on now in the, in the region. And what that means is things that were part of the original proposal that seem to be logical at the time, now given this funding differential, are being rethought. And there are ways that we can save money. I'll give you a simple example. For rail systems, you obviously have two tracks, one in each direction. But when you get to the end of the line, there's no reason to have two tracks. You can only have what we call a single track. So that when the northbound train comes, it uses that track, it leaves before the next northbound train comes. So we can single track sections of, of the, the alignment at the ends, and that saves quite a lot of money. How much could that save? It could save something in the order of 5 to 10 percent of the cost. Five to ten percent of the two hundred million, or That's of the right. whole? That, no, of, of the eight hundred million. Of the eight hundred million. Yes, yeah, so you could save quite a lot money. of money. Yeah, okay. uh, there's some places where we're talking about grade separation because you wanted the, the train to have higher priority over automobile traffic, and those grade separations can cost fifty million dollars at a time. And if we can operate without them in the short term, we can bring the cost down. Now, there's one more caveat: mm -hmm. is that the federal funding is tied to the total cost, so they're only offering one third of the total cost. So even if we lower the, the project cost, oh. we lose a little bit of federal funding, but the way that this is being spun in Waterloo now is that it's an $800 million project and we're $225 million short and that's coming out of my property taxes and that's not quite right. Where were you thinking that the scope of the project to, to see what is absolutely essential to get a meaningful project off the ground? Well a week ago today we did a uh, kind of look around the province at different uh, mm -hmm. municipal election campaigns and we did focus on the uh, innovation triangle and this has been a big deal mm -hmm. during the uh, municipal election campaign. Elections 10 days away. Yep. D does it I mean, I guess it matters a lot who wins that election as to whether or not yeah. this goes forward and how it goes forward. It's really interesting. Um, when the proposal came to council and it was approved, the, there were only two dissidents from the uh, from uh, on council who um, who raised objections about the Which proposal. Which council is this now? Uh, the, re the region of Waterloo the region. council. Okay. Yes, and and understandably they were from Cambridge because Cambridge is getting buses to begin with and then eventually light rail coming. So they were concerned about the equity across the region. Mm. Anyway, there was very strong support when it came. Now as the election comes, um, and just at the same time there's this funding differential and there is the message that it's going to be a 10% increase in your property taxes. There are many veteran councillors who have been very supportive who now are saying correctly, we have to rethink the scope of the project. And mm -hmm. what the, the opponents of the project are doing are running with this and saying, look, these are councillors backing away from the project, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. They're just saying correctly, we need to be more sensible. Ask questions. Think, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Where can we save money? Where can we do this value engineering? And, and what is actually, what do we need to have a, a meaningful light rail transit project in the region of Waterloo? Okay. Uh, your region's half a million people. Yep. Hamilton is half a million people. Right. Do they have a good case for an LRT? Um, I'm not as familiar with the Hamilton case. I'll say mm -hmm. that as, a, as a, a disclaimer before I make the comments. But I think that one thing that, that I struggle with with Hamilton is when I look at the region of Waterloo, I see growth of 250,000 people. I see growth of a lot of jobs. But I see other things. I see land use policies that say this is the boundary outside of which we're not going to allow you to, to grow. I see infrastructure investments coming into the core. I see uh, Canada, the Canada Technology Triangle, the economic development group in, in the region of Waterloo supporting the light rail project because they realize that the kind of jobs that they want to bring to the region of Waterloo are the kind of people who want to use LRT. 
when I look at Hamilton and I, and I think, are the land use controls there? I'm not sure. Are the, is the economic development as strong a case in Hamilton as it is in Waterloo? I'm not sure. Is what? the population growth? I'm not sure. Yeah. So I, I and think- And when you see what they're trying to do to put up a football stadium, which is gonna be a fraction of the cost of an LRT. Exactly. It's tough. It is. Okay. So I, I, I think I would just say I'm, I think that more study needs to be done in Hamilton before we make the decision. Let's do one more. You said we were going to go around uh, some yeah. of the bigger centers of the province. So we've done uh, Kitchener-Waterloo region. We've done Hamilton. Let's do Ottawa. Sure. Uh, Ottawa has uh, an extensive bus rapid transit system right now. Take mm -hmm. just, you know, take a half a minute and let us know how that works right now. Yeah, so uh, about three decades ago, Ottawa decided that they wanted to upgrade their transit system. And what they did in many quarters was they took buses not out of mixed traffic and not into the, me the medium, but on their own rights of way. So buses now in Ottawa operate in bus only roadways and so they have great service i mean the bus is much faster from the suburbs into the downtown core and they've been really successful and they've added many more um, routes and many more hours of service the problem is they're a victim of their own success in order to accommodate their demand now in the downtown core they have to have a bus every 18 seconds to, hmm. to accommodate the demand or else or else they're just completely over capacity I see. and so now they are trying to get a higher capacity mode and, and the key thing again about lrt is one driver can move something like, well, in, in the Ottawa case, something like a thousand people, and they can do that every three minutes versus mm -hmm. one bus that can move 70 people and they can do that every 20 seconds. But even if you do the math, the LRT is much, much more, a much higher capacity. And so that's what Ottawa's problem is now. A victim of their own success, too many people mm -hmm. getting to the downtown um, and too many buses getting to the downtown. So now they need fewer vehicles to move the same number of people and that's LRT. So that's the case for the LRT. Yeah. It's just the, the, the numbers, are compelling. That's right. The, the, in, in Ottawa, because the downtown core remains such a strong place for employment and because there is such a, a dominant travel pattern to the downtown core, Ottawa in some ways is the 1950s city of, of Canada mm -hmm. because it still has this enormously strong downtown core. Now, Canada obviously on, outside of the green belt is, from a planning perspective, maybe thought of as as an environmental challenge um, because mm -hmm. the green belt wasn't large enough and so on. But there's, there's challenges, but, but because so much of the energy is still focused downtown, the transit system, and because they made this investment 30 years ago, I mean, let's not overlook that, right? Mm -hmm. They made a huge investment by all standards 30 years ago to give buses their own roadways, and they've, they've benefited from it now. Uh, but if the evidence is so compelling, and this is such a no-brainer, why does the city not have an LRT system? Well, in 2006, they had a plan for, for an LRT system, and it was scrapped. The mayoral candidate ran against the LRT one, and, and, and what, they've, what they've done is they've rethought the LRT, so they've got a new alignment. It's no longer the east-west, it's now the north-south. I may have that backwards, but, um, <laughs> but they've, they've changed the alignment. Whatever um, it was, it's not that anymore. That's it's right, something else. <laughs> that's right. Okay. And actually, what they're proposing is a three and a half kilometer tunnel through the core, and the price tag is two billion for this 12 kilometer. So it's something like, something on the order of uh, 180 million per kilometer to build their system. And have they got it yet figured out as to the feds are going to pay so much? Yeah, the province, the, the they, they've got the commitments from the federal and the provincial government, but they're not at two billion from those two levels of government. There will be local funding that, that pays for the, the transit in hmm. Ottawa as well. Uh, in our last minute here, Jeff, any other city in Ontario that you think has a claim on building a light rail transit system? Well, I think if you look at the, the northern reaches of the GTA, I think is, as Viva continues to be successful, I think that there's certainly going to be the LRT options north of north of um, north of the, the the downtown and the GTA, um, but I'll say immodestly, and I'm not saying this because I'm proud of the Waterloo region. But as I look around and I see the other cities, I really feel like Waterloo is the best positioned for their LRT, given the comprehensiveness of their planning, the economy, um, who we are trying to attract, well, the private sector investment. All of those things are are in place, and I think. I say this a lot, actually. If it doesn't work in Waterloo, if we don't generate ridership, then I'm wrong, and I'm happy to say that. <laughs> and that means uh, 25 years of study is down the toilet. Well, something like that, yes. <laughs> not London, eh? London, Ontario doesn't have a. I don't a know much about London. I have to be honest. Okay. I'm just not that familiar. But from from anecdotally, from what I've heard, the, the case isn't as strong there as it is in Waterloo. Okay, gotcha. Jeff Casello, professor of transportation, University of Waterloo. Good of you to join us here in TVO tonight. Thanks again.